Anatomy of subarachnoid systems. Um, please excuse me, I have a very mild cold, which is an occupational hazard when you when you work at a university with 20,000 students and it's the autumn. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of a guaranteed thing. Anyway, right, let's warm my brain up again after teaching all day. Oh, brain. Um, subarachnoid systems, what are they? Well, um, we have three layers of meninges, right? Connective tissues covering the brain. You have the delicate pia mater covering the surface of the brain and tightly stuck to it. Then you have a space and you have the arachnoid mater. The arachnoid mater is stuck to the deep surface of the dura mater, the tough covering that lines the bones inside the brain and really supports this very soft structure. The arachnoid mater really is, like I say, stuck to the deep surface of the dura mater, so that space between the pia mater and the arachnoid mater is the subarachnoid space. Arachnoid, because if we look in there, we often find fibers crisscrossing that space, so it looks like a spider's web. In that subarachnoid space, we find cerebrospinal fluid, the fluid that the brain floats in to make it almost neutrally buoyant so that it doesn't squash itself because it's, it really is really, really soft, and also so it doesn't squash the nerves and arteries and veins underneath the brain. Um, in there, in that subarachnoid space, we also have arteries and veins and cranial nerves getting in and out. And the, the subarachnoid cisterns then are shapes and spaces in that subarachnoid space that, you know, we love anatomy, we love naming things we give them names. So let's work our way around the subarachnoid systems, name them and try to understand why they are named that way so that we can remember their names. First of all, so here's a mid-sagittal section of the head. Let's just label all the ones that we can see on here uh, as a little aid memoir and if that's all you need then you're done, you can leave. Um, but the, the cistern, so a cistern is a, it's like a big chamber. Or is it, it's a chamber filled with fluid, right? I'm thinking of a toilet cistern. Is that, just, is that just a British thing, a toilet cistern? Or do they get called that around the world? Yeah, that's the thing that stores the water, the water and then you pull the handle and it goes and flushes the toilet. So anyway, so the cisterns are uh, these fluid filled spaces and they're often named by the bits of the brain that they are next to, which is very helpful. Um, much of the time, that helps us remember their names. So also looking at the, um, the cisterns helps us better understand the structures of the brain in three dimensions, which is kind of difficult to get to grips with. All right, so you've seen those labels. Uh, there are more that aren't in the mid-sagittal uh, section, so hang around for those. All right, let's, uh, let's do the big one first. So the big space down here is the uh, cisterna magna, but we've got the medulla here and the cerebellum. So this also might get called the cerebellomedullary cistern. And in fact, this bit might get called the posterior cerebellomedullary cistern. You've got to imagine this space continues in three dimensions around the medulla, cisterna magna. Now, the reason this one's so important is because of course, the cerebrospinal fluid is flowing through the ventricular system inside the brain to the fourth ventricle, and then that CSF can leave the fourth ventricle through two lateral apertures and a median aperture, and that CSF flows to the cisterna magna. Um, so it's the first place to collect a lot of that, that CSF. So through here, we've got things like cranial nerves 9, 10, and 11 running through here to, to leave the cranial cavity. Here's the pons. So around here we can see some spaces. So this is the, this is the pontine system, sometimes called the pre-pontine system, because if you were considering moving in this direction, you get to it before the pons. Um, so in the pre-pontine system, then we've got the basilar artery running up on this side, haven't we? Uh, sending uh, branches out to the pons and whatnot. So cerebellum, medulla. If you imagine this three-dimensional shape and a space running around here, that sometimes gets called the cerebellomedullary cistern. You can imagine that the space lateral to the pons here uh, gets called the cerebellopontine cistern. So we're saying that there's a space around the pons and around the medulla. And that's not too surprising. You can see there's, a, there's an angle there, right? And there's a bit of, there's, so there's cisterns there as well. Cerebellopontine, cerebellomedullary. 
As we move superiorly, here we have the interpeduncular cistern. So this is the level of the midbrain and um, here, so we're in, we're in there and the midbrain is sending peduncles up to the cerebrum. So this space between the two temporal lobes anterior to the midbrain as it's passing through that temporal notch, um, so anterior to the peduncles, that's the interpeduncular cistern. Um, in here, we're seeing the ocular motor nerve, cranial nerve three. We're seeing the basilar artery becoming the two posterior cerebral arteries. We're also seeing the superior cerebellar artery in there. And then, if on the other side, so if that's the interpeduncular cistern there, over here we have the quadrigeminal cistern. So on the posterior midbrain we have these colliculi, little hills, the four colliculi, uh, and they get called the, um, the corpora quadrigemina, the four twinned bodies, right? And you can see there's a space there. So that's another cistern, the quadrigeminal cistern. This is then inferior to the splenium of the corpus callosum. It's superior to the cerebellum, posterior to the midbrain. It actually, imagine it again, curves around, continues around here in three dimensions, although actually the lateral part often gets called the um, ambient cistern. So in there, we've got the great cerebral vein of Galen, We've got the pineal gland. We've got the trochlear nerve in there. And we're also going to find those superior cerebellar arteries again and posterior cerebral arteries, aren't they? Aren't we, as they come around here and run around. Um, nearby, so the pituitary gland is in the cella tersica. This here is the optic chiasm. There's the thalamus. Here, uh, the optic chiasm is in uh, a subarachnoid cistern. This is the chiasmatic cistern, or the supracellar cistern, superior to the cella tersica. So this is a space in here. So there's the frontal lobe. This is a space between the hypothalamus and the bone um, in there. You can maybe see the spaces a little bit better there. So there's the, the optic chiasm, pituitary gland will be sitting there. And you can now see there's a space there inferior to that lobe that the optic chiasm is in. So that is another cistern, the chiasmatic cistern in there. Now there's another one up in there. How are we, how are we going to get in there? All right. So if this is the third ventricle, <clears throat> can you see the anterior wall in the midline of the third ventricle is like really thin. This is the lamina terminalis. <clears throat> just anterior to the lamina terminalis, oh, we can see the blood vessel. Just anterior to the lamina terminalis is a subarachnoid cistern. It is called the cistern of the lamina terminalis. Um, so it's in that midline space, right? There's a space between the left and right lobes. Um, and we can see there, there is the anterior cerebral artery. So the anterior cerebral arteries are in there and also the anterior communicating artery linking the two anterior cerebral arteries is usually in there. So the, the cistern of the lamina terminalis, it's up in there. Uh, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's up, it's, so it's between the two. Oh, that doesn't, that doesn't actually come apart. It's up in there. Anyway, oh, as we're in this really finicky region. Um, so here are the internal carotid arteries, which will become the middle cerebral arteries and give off the anterior cerebral arteries. So the, the, the internal carotid arteries are actually going through the cavernous sinus, right? But when they leave the cavernous sinus and run superiorly, they are in their own um, carotid cistern for a little way. So there's a carotid cistern on either side. So <laughs> that would be in here somewhere. Oh, we've also got the, uh, the crural cistern. So these are the temporal lobes. We, we said this was the interpeduncular system. If you go in there and around, you can um, pull that apart in there. 
The optic tract runs around the midbrain and those peduncles, those cerebral crura, the cistern running around the midbrain in there is the crural cistern. But that, of course, is going to become the ambient cistern or the lateral part of the quadrigeminal cistern. But you get the gist. So that space, that space in, in there running around the midbrain. Brains are tricky. Um, well, yeah, OK, so if that's the, uh, the longitudinal fissure in the midline, and this is the lateral fissure or the lateral sulcus, frontal lobe, temporal lobe. If you pull the frontal lobe and temporal lobe apart, in there you see the insular lobe or the insular, some more grey matter, right? There's a, um, there's a subarachnoid cistern in there as well. So the subarachnoid cistern in there gets called the, the sylvian cistern because of the, this gets called the sylvian fissure as well as being called the lateral fissure or sylvian sulcus. Or it gets called the insular cistern because of the insular lobe that's in there. Oh, no, wait, wait, wait. I just remember, of course, I got this guy, haven't I? Um, all right, we should be able to see uh, the sylvian cistern on this. Uh, oh, that's nice. There we go. So there's the, uh, the sylvian cistern or the insular cistern up against the insular lobe. In there, we find the uh, middle cerebral artery. Cool. Oh, there's another one in the place. So, okay, so where is the subarachnoid cistern that's not in the head? Uh, the spinal cord, of course, continues to be surrounded by pia mater and have a subarachnoid space and then arachnoid mater and dura mater. The lumbar cistern is a subarachnoid cistern between, well, from inferior to where the spinal cord ends at about the L1, L2 vertebral level. So the lumbar cistern is where we find the corda equina. This is where we find the spinal nerves descending before leaving uh, before leaving, um, so the lumbar cistern. So again, we've got cerebrospinal fluid in here. This is, of course, the preferred location for sampling cerebrospinal fluid, for whatever you might be looking for. So the lumbar cistern is in the vertebral column between L1 and L2 to about S2. All right, that's the anatomy of the subarachnoid cisterns, largest spaces in the subarachnoid space. Useful to know about because they are um, landmarks when you're looking at radiology. Uh, and if you know what's in those spaces, that helps you know where you are in the brain and what should be there and what shouldn't be there. I guess if you're a neurosurgeon, these are access corridors to get to things without having to poke holes through things. But if you're a neuro neurosurgeon, you should be making this video, not me. Right, uh, okay. Speak to you next week.